Hello, this is Mike Lively from Northern Kentucky University, and today we're going to show you how to make a 3D engine with just 19 lines of code. Now, in the original Flash, uh, Flash 9, there was no Z support or no third dimension. So everything was X and Y, and so you had to have a way to come up with Z or develop Z. And that way was Thales Theorem. And Thales Theorem says uh, the size that you see is divided by its actual size equals the focal length divided by the focal length plus Z. So if you look at this little monkey right here, he's looking through a little, uh, in a sense, projection plane. And here's your actual object right here. So this object is outside your window, and as it goes forward and back, that's the z-axis. And as the monkey gets forward and back from the focal length, or the projection plane, that's your focal length. And pretty much that's all there is into creating a third dimension, using this equation FL, focal length, divided by focal length plus z. Well, uh, you can read more about this on my blog, www.professionalpapervision.wordpress.com. One more issue when it comes to developing 3D in Flash is that just doing perspective scaling using Thales theorem is not enough. You need z-sorting as well. And z-sorting basically was very easy in ActionScript 2 and is a little more difficult in ActionScript 3. Uh, all the code there is on my blog site, but basically you have to use set child index and basically index over all the objects each time you do an iteration of motion and pretty much stack them depending on what's closest and what's farther away. Of course the farther away has the lower index number and the closest has the highest index number and that stacks on the top. So let's get in the code and let's develop the program. So let's take a look at the demo of the 3D Flash engine. So here's a little demo. You can click right here. Let's bring that up. And basically, it's just a rotating ball or circle that changes perspective or size as it goes further back in Z. And when it gets to a certain point, it starts to bounce back. Here we go, and it gets larger and larger. And so the equations of motion are working. Thales theorem is good. So you've created uh, this with just 19 lines of code. And then it goes back again. Let's show you how it works. So in writing this code, the first thing you need to do is import the flash.display.sprite so you actually have something to draw the ball or circle on. And then the next thing you do is you define your Z position as zero, an angle that you're going to iterate. That's what gives you that motion going round and round and getting smaller and smaller. And then you want to define your focal length, and 250 or 300 is a good focal length. Then next you want to define a ball as a sprite. You want to fill it with a color, and you want to draw a circle at 0, 0 with a radius of 40. And then finally, you want to add that in the fill and then add that ball to the stage. And the next thing, most important, is you have that on enter frame. This on enter frame is really what differentiates a game from a website because the websites don't have an on enter frame constantly clicking through or changing uh, or constantly rendering. But uh, games do. And finally, you have that iterative set of equations that on enter frame that on enter frame function that you're clicking through. Basically you want to find the scale value, that focal length over focal length plus z position. You want to iterate your angle so you get that rotation, that animation. And if it's greater than 20, you want to switch angles so you're going back and forth. So you're having this oscillating motion in the z direction. Next you want basically to find an x and y coordinate of the ball. And pretty much that's just a sine and cosine angle. That's where you get your spinning. And you're going to scale that with perspective. So as you uh, as z increases, then your uh, perspective gets smaller and smaller, or as it decreases, it goes the other direction, gets larger and larger. And, and finally, you want to scale that ball in X and Y, so it gets smaller or larger, uh, so the perspective changes on the ball itself. And uh, that's pretty much it. Then you change to Z uh, position, uh, just multiplying the angle by 100 because you want to increment further in the Z direction. And that's all there is to the code, 19 lines of code. Let's go ahead and grab that and uh, run it in Flash. So I'm going come down here on my blog and I'm going to go to the very end of it. At the bottom there's a more button and when you click that you can just cut and paste this code right into Flash and we'll see if it runs. And you can see with each line of code I actually have the comments with that as well so you can see what it does. Let's copy that, let's open up Flash and see if we can get it to run. Okay we're in Flash right now, let's go ahead and create a new Flash file and hit the F9 key to bring up the action scripting or go to Windows properties or go to or go to windows actions and click on actions 
So here's my actions pane. I'm just going to paste the code that I copied from my blog right in there. And there it is. And we're going to run it and hope that it works. So control test. Hey, there you have it. I love it when my code works. And so that's the spinning ball. It's moving kind of slow here because I'm actually capturing and running Flash at the same time. But as you can see, as uh, it moves, uh, iterates and moves backwards, the perspective gets smaller, or the z-scaling gets smaller. And as it comes forward, closer to the window of the projection portal, it gets larger. So uh, uh, can you believe it? 19 lines of code. Your own 3D engine. Just one more thing to comment on is that, let's go to the blog real quick is when you do this engine, you actually get a, some very important things. This is not paper vision, but from it, uh, all the quantities that paper vision possesses uh, are included. So it has a frame looper or renderer. It has that perspective or z-coordinate. It has a projection plane uh, or a viewport. Uh, it has a primitive, like the little circle, a basic shape, and it adds a material. So these are all very important uh, quantities in paper vision and you see those come out of just this 19 lines of code <laughs> well it just couldn't be easier wouldn't it be nice if everything stayed like that when paper vision first started it was 20 classes and now it's hundreds and growing so if you want to learn more and read more about this discussion just go to my blog site which is uh, www.professionalpapervision.wordpress.com this is Michael Ivey from Northern Kentucky University